there's this film that I didn't know about until I started researching, and uh, it's called In Search of a Midnight Kiss, mm -hmm. and you were the lead in it. And that must have been right around the time when you were... 2006. 2006. Yeah. And in it, you play an out-of-work actor in L.A., and you write this letter to an ex-girlfriend, and you describe that, you know, you moved out to L.A., but you crashed your car on the way here, and you're out of work, and you're broke, and you don't know anybody, and it's lonely. And it got me thinking, like, you know, this is the story that many actors actually have when they come to L.A. And I wondered how autobiographical that letter was, and, you know, if you had some low points in L.A., too, where you were kind of lost and not knowing what you were doing, and if you were... You know what I mean? Like, yes. like uh, how that, how autobiographical that story was. I mean, it couldn't have been. It was the actual the true story of the filmmaker, Alex Holdridge. That okay. was his actual life, and he sort of wrote it almost verbatim. He did crash his car on the way out. He, he did have all these struggle, struggles. But what I experienced in 2000 or 2001 when I moved out here, 2000, was... Very, you know, exactly the same, very similar. I mean, I, I, I remember just being broke and I had to move into my car and... Oh, really? Yeah, and it was like this kind of... How long was that for? Only for like two months, two and a half months. Where would you park? I didn't, I would keep all my stuff in my car and then I, you know, there was a friend, Julianne, who had this house in Venice Beach and there was a, like a, a fold-out couch in the backyard and I'd stay there sometimes, stayed over this other person's couch. I was couch surfing more so than living in my car, but I just didn't have any money. And, um, God, I remember, I remember thinking, I just want a place, I just need a place. And I found this awful place behind the Magic Castle that was just, and I remember the guy walking out and I said, hey, is there any place for rent around here? Because there's no rent size. He's like, yeah, I think they're renting this place. He gave me the number. I met the Chews. The Chews was like, we'll rent it to you for 500 bucks. I bought 500 bucks from my buddy, rented the place, and I had this candy apple that I kept in my car and all this dry, like, crackers and stuff and fruit because you didn't need a refrigerator. And I remember uh, I kept this candy apple going. When I get a place, I'm going to eat this candy apple. And I remember getting that place. I took a shower in there. I didn't have any, any stuff. And I just laid on that hardwood floors naked and just ate that candy apple and to said to myself, like, I don't ever want to go broke again. Like, that was, that was one of the hardest times in my life, and, and, and I, I'm going to work my ass off for the rest of my life so that I don't ever have to be in that place again. And, uh, I don't know, I think that I chalk up to a lot to where I've gotten is, 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 from relentless hard work. I mean, like, relentless. And also doing whatever, like having no ego about commercials or short film or... Yeah. Like, work is work to me. And I think you start picking your projects when you have two going at the same time. You know, other than that, like, work is work. I mean, we all have movies that we're like, oh, I can't believe I did that movie. And I'm like, I absolutely can believe I did that movie because I wasn't doing anything else. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? It was either that sitting at home or do this short film. So where were your parents in the narrative when you're, when you're keeping your stuff in your car and you're trying to get work in L.A.? I think that was part of it. I think I remember finding that place and calling my mom or my dad and saying, can I borrow 500 bucks? I found this place. And I think that was the turning point if they were like, no. Like, no, you can't borrow any money. Like, this is life. You know, welcome. Uh, no. And it was a, it was a tough moment, but it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Because I just realized I'm never going to ask for a dollar from anybody for the rest of my life. Hey, folks, thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, then why not subscribe? Click right here for lots more off-camera. And if you want to see the hour-long version of these conversations, I'm going to give you the secret link. Here it is, offcamera.com. Check it out. <laughs>